So, James, brilliant to have Reese joining us this week for the first time of many this season. And as I've already mentioned, what a way, uh, what a welcome to the podcast for Reese with that excellent win at Leicester. Um, I thought that the we're going to win the league, all that sort of stuff at the London Stadium was hilarious uh, on Monday night. But yeah, I mean, just first of all, straight into it. Then, boys, James, I'll start with you. Initial reaction from the Leicester game? Because I saw you on Twitter and it looked like you were sobbing with every tweet that you wrote. Oh, you know me, mate. I'm a I'm an emotional football fan and um, I was very close to tears on a couple of occasions, just, just with tears of joy and happiness because, as I said before in the intro, just did not see it coming. Just took me complete, caught me completely off guard. And I know we're capable of performances like that, but um, I just, yeah, I just didn't see it coming. And I think also the the whole occasion, first game back, I worked it out. It was the last, first time I've been back there watching a the game for 542 days. And it was 60,000 fans in there. Um, on the back of the season we had last year, everyone wanted to go there and give the, you know, give the players a good, mm-hmm. a good reception, which they fully deserved. And, and then they, they re- repaid us with you know, probably one of the best performances I can remember from a West Ham team for, for many, many years. It was just superb throughout. And there aren't many games where you can look at it and go, it was really, really good, but there was a few little flaws in the performance that we need to iron out out of last week with the defensive problems that led to Newcastle's two goals. You know, it was a good performance, good win, but a couple of little things we need to work out. There was nothing in that game, I don't think, where I thought, yeah, we kind of got to work on that in the coming weeks to make sure we we don't repeat those mistakes. It was For me, it was a, it was a flawless performance. Yeah, I totally agree. I, I don't think it was anything. You couldn't pick up on any, could you? Exactly what you said there, mate. Echo those sentiments. I think to a man, every you know, the quietest player was probably Thomas Suchek, and even he put in an eight out of ten performance. Yeah. So yeah, I was delighted to see that. Reese, your um, your uh, sort of initial reaction, great win, obviously, but um, is there sort of anything you noticed? I mean, me and James were in the stadium last night. I think you watched this one from home. Um, yeah, was, but any. Uh, any- any sort of difference you noticed or anything? What was your immediate takeaway from no, it? I was uh, obviously an armchair supporter last night, but I think just mirroring what James said, the you could tell from the start of the game that the team were up for it. The fans were massively up for it. Um, the first sort of five, ten minutes, I think we tried to see what, what even though we probably knew the formation they were playing, we would, the, certain players were like um, Madison and that Barnes were getting in certain pockets on the left-hand side, but once we started doing the, what we've been doing in the last, of course, it's got to be a good 20, 25 games now, where we're breaking. It's mm. just unbelievable. I haven't seen anything like that that front four yeah. um, for, for ages. Do you know what I mean? It, it's as if as soon as we can sort of nullify the attack and we break, you know, I mean, obviously Antonio's in unbelievable form, but mm. the boys look so strong. They look, they look slight players, but when they're getting on the ball, they're not being shoved off the ball. The awareness of where the players are and things like that. Once we got into our stride, I didn't. You're right. What you were saying, I was I was nervous before the game because of a because of their pace um, mm. and obviously our defensive issues in the first half last week. But it was just an absolute flawless performance. Do you know what I mean? And it's one of them games where the crowd could enjoy it. Even at yeah. much, in the ground, every, every probably I'm sure the boys that were in the ground sitting at home, I was like, "Don't be like this." But <laughs> it, it just it didn't. Nothing seemed to go wrong for me. So mm. it, it it did go quiet in the ground, didn't it? It went two it did, one, yeah. and it just sort of subdued a bit. There was a few people trying to sort of g him up, and I was trying to get involved in that, but everyone was just like taking a collective, holding their breath just for a minute. Um, and then obviously when the, the third goes in, it settled everyone down and it was party time. But I thought yeah, I thought you were right, Reese. You sort of eased their way into the game. To be quite honest, I thought both teams were sort of cancelling each other out really until until Fornell scored. I think it could have gone either way and it was a moment of absolute quality. His shimmy in the middle of the park, he dropped a shoulder and turned and sold about four Leicester players yeah. at once, um, which started off the move. Obviously, he plays the one-two. Lovely at return pass back and a, and a phenomenal finish. Um, I just want to, on Pablo Fornells, I know we'll get on to Mikel uh, Antonio, 
and uh, Saeed Ben Rama, of course, who were the, the, the sort of headline grabbers. But I thought Pablo Fornells last night was absolutely phenomenal. I, I thought he was, it's the best performance by a mile I've seen him put in. And if he was doing that in a, in a Liverpool shirt or a Man City shirt, he would have had people, pundits up and down the land, you know, singing from the rafters about how good he was. I thought he was worked hard as he always does, but his, his quality on the ball was phenomenal. He was linking things up nicely. Every pass he seemed to make was a dangerous one, incisive, accurate. I thought he was absolutely top draw. Uh, James, I tell you, let's start a positive before we move on. I want to get your two opinion on the Perez red card, of course. But um, if you had to pick a man of the match, I think the the Sky Pundits, because I've obviously watched the game back today, the extended highlights, uh, the Sky Pundits were split between Ben Rama and Antonio. Um, James, we'll go to you first. Who who, who would you pick for that? Um, it's, a, it's a toss-up between Fornells and Antonio. I think you, you're absolutely right about Fornells. Definitely his best game in a West Ham shirt. And he's had quite a few of those of, of late as well. Um but I just can't, I don't think you can take much away from Antonio's all round performance. And then, I mean, those two goals he scored, I mean, arguably, he scored 51 goals in all competitions for us now. Two, probably two of his best from a technical point of view, especially that second one. The second um, one was, yeah. But it's just, just, I mean, a mate of mine in the group, Tottenham fan in my WhatsApp group this morning, said it's a sort of goal that a world class striker scores. And I was like, well, that's why he scored it, because he's world class, isn't he? <laughs> um, and it, it, it was just, it was class. And um, I think when you consider the fact that he made history with that first goal, all-time leading scorer in the in the Premier League for West Ham, I think you've got to give it to him. And for the celebration yeah. as well. Yeah, the celebration was weird. They should have Strange, got a double right? yeah. a double sided cutout because all it looked like in the stand, he was just holding up this white cardboard cutout to everyone, and no one could see that it was him on the other side. Uh, Reese, just quickly before I get your man of the match, um, there's a few question marks. I think David Moyes come out after the game and has said that he he gave Antonio a bit of a volley at half time, saying he'd made some poor decisions on the ball in the first half. Um, and you know, James hasn't even mentioned Ben Rama there. Uh, you know, what, what did you make of uh, of Antonio in, in the first half? Did you see any of that sort of watching it on TV that, um, that he might not have been as good as, as he was in the second? Yeah, I mean, I, th- I think obviously, I don't know whether you see it, but after the game when he got interviewed, he did mention that he was he felt he was trying too hard to get a goal in the first half, right? And you know, the one where I think he he had that shot where he'd done a bit of strong work and then broke and sort of like banana sh- shot it wide. Yeah. He, <laughs> when, the, when the camera panned on him, he looked like he had the right arm. Yeah. You know, swearing himself and things like that. So maybe he just needed that bit of, you know, to sort of chill out. I mean, fair play with the celebration. Like to have all that set up thinking that you're going to potentially – Scoring a game that you're either winning or you'll win, score the winning goal. But yeah, yeah. You know, the first half, obviously, when we scored, it it might have settled him down a little bit. But you have seen that before, where players are, you know, over the years we've seen it where strikers we've had have struggled to score goals and they end up getting so desperate that you know they're out of the game. So he, he was brilliant. He was brilliant. Yeah, and your who's your who do you give your man of the match to? Because I'm gonna go with Fornells, which seems mega harsh on Ben Rama because he's got a goal and an assist. Um, I thought Declan Rice was good, so I'm gonna go Fornells just because I was spaffing about him on Twitter earlier on, so I need to back that up. I'm annoyed it didn't go viral, so uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna double down on it on here. But who's your man of the match, Reese? Uh, you got to go Antonio. I think you've got to go Antonio because you know even his awareness for Ben Rama's goal. Mm, you know, yeah, just, that's true. He just, you know, I have been a bit of a, I've given him a volley now and again about him playing up front for us, but I think he showed everyone last night that, you know, he's the man to lead the line, providing he can stay fit. He looks yeah. sharp, looks hungry, and he, he does always get on the score sheet. So all of them, all of them do, mate, don't they? And not get on the score sheet. All of them look so fit and they look mm. razor sharp. Like, all of them. It looks like whatever we've done in pre-season has been timed to perfection. I thought the same on the opening day at Newcastle. They ended up looking, I think a few commentators afterwards, um, Newcastle fans said they ended up looking leggy. But I don't know if it was that or they just looked leggy next to us because we look so, we look in absolutely our standard shapes. So a fair play to the coaching staff for that. Right, lads. Um, the 
red card because it did. Let's be, let's you know, or to quote, uh, to use a James Jones phrase, let's have it right. Uh, the red card drastically changed the game. We don't always see it when players get sent off. Often it makes for a boring game. Um, obviously that happens at one nil, and I was a bit worried that uh, Leicester are just going to sit in. And hopefully we're just going to they're going to try and nick an equaliser and be happy with it. Uh, but it completely opened the game up. But Brendan Rodgers coming out defending Perez, all the Leicester players, even after seeing it on the big screen, still moaning and saying it shouldn't have been a red card. It was horrific. It was an absolutely horrific challenge. Uh, James, I'll get your first and then I'll rant about it in a bit. It, just, it was weird because when, when it first happened, we were all, we were all saying, oh, fun hours, get up, mate, because it happened on the other side of the Yeah, pitch. ditto, yeah, ditto. Like, get up, like, you only barge off the ball, like, you can't be that, you can't be that bad. Um, and then when they showed that after he's shown in the red card, and we were all still a little bit like, why has he been sent off? And they showed it on the big screen. Because yeah. of the view that we had, it looked like he'd, it was an elbow. Right. So I was looking on the video for the elbow. I completely missed the, the ankle. <laughs> so I, at half time, having a beer, I had to then get it up on my phone and watch it on a, a clip on Twitter to actually understand what on earth had gone on. Because even at half time, yeah, yeah. I was like, it's been sent off, I've been shoved off the ball or, or shoving someone off the ball. I don't understand it. But then you do see it, and yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a clear red card. And Michael Oliver didn't need too long to have a look at it, did he? So, no, he looked at um, it once, didn't he, from that yeah, angle? Yeah, right, it's, it, it was a red card. And regardless of whether he meant it or not, like he's hey, he did, his, he stamped on his ankle. Um, yeah. I've seen a few people go, oh, you know, he didn't mean it. He was he was off balance and he just had something to plant on his foot. It was yeah, like, yeah, yeah, but you still had a, a yard either side of four nails his ankle yeah. to put your foot down. And he so, didn't, mate. You, I mean, he wasn't, it's, yeah. It's a red card. It's a red card, clear as day. Um, and, you know, I know, you just said it there that you, you drastically changed the game. I still think we would have gone on and won it because we were, on, I mean, I know we were one nil up at the time, but we were, we were playing well. We were on top. And I, I still back us to, go, to have probably gone on the one by the same score. And I don't think it changed the game as much as a lot of people are saying it is. Because I think I think we were we were playing so well at the moment in that moment. And um, you know, Leicester didn't really have many answers to the, to the way that we were playing and to the way we were mm. on top of them. So, so yeah, I mean, it changed the game, but I don't think it changed it as much as a lot of people are claiming it to be. Well, I don't know about that, mate. I don't know if we'd have gone on beating a full one. Reese, um, similar sort of take on on the red, I assume. Yeah, again, I didn't, first of all, didn't really know what had happened. No. Um, the one thing that did surprise me is I'm I'm surprised. I mean, obviously, I'm watching it back in the slow motion part when they're showing it, but I'm surprised he didn't go on the floor, Perez, when he got Presswell was sort of went in the back yeah. side. Um, so, he obviously, then that made him take a bad touch, and he's obviously stumbling. But like they said last night, he does look up, so... You know, for me, he's fully aware that he's there. Yeah, he probably didn't mean it, but, you know, it, that that's what VAR's there for. Mm. Because regardless of sending him off, if he had got a really bad injury, you know, he, he should have been punished for it anyway. So, yeah, um, yeah I don't... And he could have, couldn't he? That injury yeah. could have been bad. Yeah, I'm, I'm surprised with them. that they, they, They're not a lot worse, if you know what I mean. But, mm. yeah, part of me is surprised that they didn't get a free kick if he um, but he weren't really in the game that Perez anyway. So again, I'm, I'm with you. I don't at that point. We, I felt we were so on top that you know it could. But obviously they could have grown into the game the longer it went on. But yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I thought it was even more black and white than that. To be honest, I think when you look at it again, I thought the best thing as well. By the way, was everyone in the stadium apart from Jonesy apparently when they showed it on the screen. Everyone in the ground went. Ooh, like straight, <laughs> straight after that, it, which... that was that's sort what of made me even more confused because I was like, "What is what is everyone seeing?" <laughs> like 60,000 60, fans have seen something, and I haven't seen it. What on earth's gone on? <laughs> James just thinking everyone's well overreacting to a shoulder yeah. guard. But... The thing is, I think as well, the, the Leicester players, especially Schmeichel, I know he's he, he's the skipper. For them, yeah, yeah. Quite, I understand at the time, but if he'd had a couple of minutes and seen it. He'll know that that's a red card. Well, they yeah. did. They all you know watched I mean? it on the big it's screen, quite, didn't they? I'm surprised at how much they were trying to get it overturned as such, even before he'd given him the red card. But, yeah, it was ridiculous. Ridiculous the way they were acting. But, yeah. 
It was right. Just quickly, can you two, for you two, clear this up? Everyone was booing Schmeichel before any of that, right? I mean, later on in the game, it was funny and everyone was giving him loads of grief. Can I just clear up? Is it something to do with the Euros? Or... Yeah, he, he had a pop at England, didn't he, about... Um, it's oh, yeah, has it ever come home? Oh, has it ever come home? And he was maybe giving us a bit of dick for it, wasn't he? Is that? No, it is. I wondered if that was it. That was all I could think. But I was like, Jesus! If like as soon as he like when the players came out and he ran down to the Bobby Moore end before the first half, everyone's just like boo as he approached. And yeah, I did that. Uh, I wasn't any sure about it. any opportunity to get mate. You know that you know yeah. for anyone. You know, <laughs> yeah. Think- yeah, yeah, I suppose. I just did think that was a bit odd, but it was funny afterwards, especially when Yuri Tielemans giving it to the fans as well when he scored a goal completely against the runner play and we went on the win 4 1 was absolutely bizarre as well. But lads, look, we've got to mention him. Uh, Saeed Ben Rama, fantastic start to the season, absolutely brilliant to, to see him sort of blossoming into the player. I think West Ham thought they were signing. Last season, totally understandable that he took a bit of time to get in. We've covered already on this podcast whether or not he did have more game time last season. I think I'm happy to leave that in the past now and just talk about now and the future with Saeed. Um, Reese, we'll go to you first. He, he looked absolutely phenomenal again last night, didn't he? And, and he's coming up with a good the end product is there, which is the most important thing. Yeah, again, I, th- I think it's enough on him when you sign a player. Um, that doesn't have a full season and he's in and out of the side, it is quite harsh to judge him on the games he's played. Um, you know, obviously last season when Lingard was in and he wasn't getting a look in, you are putting him under pressure a bit when he's coming on. There were certain games last year before he come on or he played that he was really good. But again, he just looks a different player. And that's only been two games, but he looks like he's bulked up a little bit. He looks nice and quick. He's got that you know, the, the passing link-up play with the, the other players already seems to be there. Um, he's a very good player, technically. So, you know, you don't become a bad player overnight. They would have seen something kidding they liked. And it's brilliant to see. And long may it continue with him. Because, yeah. you know, he looks like he enjoys his football. Um, a couple of times, he was pulling out of tackles, um, which... He'd probably say that that's not part of his game, but, you know, all in all, fantastic performance as well. Yeah, he was phenomenal. Again, I think he just looks like James, doesn't he? I think the the freedom and the knowledge that he's probably going to start every game, like while Lingard isn't back, uh, that seems to have given him a huge boost. A bit like when I used to play with Reese, and Reese was my manager. Um, when I knew I was starting every week, I was phenomenal, but uh, it's when he kept chopping and changing me that my form always used to dip. Um, but he, he does, doesn't he? He just looks, he looks wonderful, yeah, and he looks full of confidence. Just and absolutely, like Reese said, there, just delighted to be playing and playing well for West Ham. Yeah, we said it last year, though, didn't we? That it, it, very early on, it was very clear that he is a confidence player. You know, you only see the very, very best of him when he's at the high height of confidence, and um, I mean, you know, it, it took him ages to get his first goal. He got that against Brighton last year. And ever since he got that, he's got better and better and better. He had a, he had a brilliant pre-season, scored a few goals. Um, and he's taken that into this year. And I think Tony Cotty said it last week as well. That you know, It's just probably taken a bit of time just to settle at the club. I know he's only gone from one side of London to the other, but um, just taking a bit of time to settle in the club, get to know the lads a little bit more, get to know the tactics. New league, learn, never played in the Premier League. League, learn a little bit more about how David Morris wants him to play in certain positions. Um and now he knows, as you said, now he knows he's going to be starting every week. Then, you know, he can just let his football do the talking. And, and he's he's been absolutely superb. He's the player, he's, big, he's showing that he's the player that we that we all knew he could be. Hmm. Um, and that's why a lot of fans are getting frustrated last year because they were like, we've got a great player on their hands here. It's just impatience, I think that not, was. He's not getting the minutes. Um, but I think fans knew and now they're beginning to see, OK, well, that's why we're a bit frustrated last year because this is the player that we've got. Um, hmm. But obviously, it was just taking a bit of time for him to get up to speed a little bit. But now we're seeing him at full speed, and it's wonderful. Yeah, he's absolutely brilliant, mate. He's doing. I think also, my... just saying, mate. I think it helps having Bowen and Full Nails with him. Yeah, in that three yeah. because they'll they'll do a lot of dog work for him. So yeah. you know, if he's a bit high on the pitch or things like that, you know, them two will really really graft around him. He does as well, but 
you know, that side of things will help him um, to know that maybe he can try something a little bit different because he's got a bit of backup. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think, you know, it's just brilliant. So he's doing wonders for my fantasy team as well, which is uh, absolutely lovely. Um, but it's one thing I do want to touch on, lads, is this, and I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to say anything negative about last night, really, because I thought it was all perfect. It's one little thing that's been niggling at me since. All this chat that's come about, I know David Moyes said it was like Upton Park, right, which is sort of fine. I I don't mind that. That was a reasonable statement. The atmosphere was phenomenal. But it's all this, like, commentary and chat from people, again, the majority of whom have probably never been to the London Stadium or have maybe been once or twice, going, yeah, it's the first time... It, the stadium proper felt like home. It was the first time there was a proper atmosphere at London Stadium. It's the first time it's ever felt like Upton Park. That's just garbage. It's just cheap, lazy punditry, that. Because it's not yeah. true at all. There's, there was a fantastic game. The first time I thought it was rocking was Chelsea. I think we beat them in the League yeah. Cup. Yeah. yeah, that's it. We played Tottenham when Lanzini scored and we beat them. It's, well, this was all sort of early on. We've had some games at that ground where there have been phenomenal atmospheres, 60,000 West Ham fans proper back in the team. There's been loads of that before. Anyone saying it's the first time it's felt like Upton Park and or it's the first time it's felt like home, it's just lazy in my I think, opinion. I think Monday night was probably the best night that London Stadium's had. But no it's not, chance. It's not the first time it's ever been like that. But I think I think it was the best atmosphere London Stadium has experienced. And I think partly sorry, beating Tottenham is better than that. Beating Leicester four one at home just doesn't. No, I th- I think that the extra bite of fans being there for the first time for twenty months, um, I think that gave it that extra bit of bite, extra bit of passion amongst the fans. I'd like I I was standing there going, I, I don't recall another day where it's been this. Almost, it was almost intense because it was just like just everyone was just in such a great mood. Obviously, mm. the Tottenham, the Tottenham wins, and you know we've beaten them a couple of times, and the Chelsea one that you mentioned were incredible atmospheres as well. But I think the Leicester one pips them all. But to say that it's the the only time or the first time it's been like that is is way off the mark because like it's been like, you can count, you couldn't you couldn't even count on two hands how many times we've had good, good days there. Yeah, I think, mate. I'll be honest. I think even. <laughs> Even you, I think it's just fans wanted to say that it felt so much better because it hadn't been for ages. But <laughs> there's no way you could tell me that that was any better or that much different to like the Tottenham win. I remember le- when that Lanzini goal went in, there was like so much bated breath and energy. And uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I just think like you included in this, by the way. I'm, <laughs> yeah, I just yeah, think yeah. everyone was just desperate to be able to say, oh, that's, like there's no like, reason it was uh, any think... better than beating Tottenham at home. <laughs> I think I think no, though so. you, you you're thinking about the team that we're beating rather than just the general occasion. No, 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 I'm not. I'm just saying. I, <laughs> I, I genuinely, I genuinely felt as though that was the best atmosphere that that stadium has experienced since we moved in. Mm. Like that's mate, that's you're just, just wrong. The, that's all, mate. Yeah, that's just the way I felt. I mean, <laughs> you just you just don't have, you just don't have enough enough pa- as as much passion as me, mate. <laughs> Obviously not, mate. Obviously not. <laughs> Reese, what did it sound like on the telly? Could the atmosphere yeah, was it coming perfect. through? I mean, it, it, it reminded me of one of them games where, um, a bit like the times when we'd been relegated and we've come up and the opposition have scored first, it, it was as if like the crowd were giving the, the players every chance last night. You know what I mean? You've been to games where we go a goal down and that's the end of it. People are getting up, going down to the toilet, going to get a beer or whatever. But it felt like, a, it, it almost felt like a cup tie last night on the mm-hmm. telly. Um, you know, atmosphere... I'm probably with you on the Tottenham one. Obviously, I didn't go last night, but um, there's been quite a few over there. I, I, the problem is you, we will always have this link with Upton Park, especially with the night games um, mm. about the you know the atmosphere and things like that. And you know we've all admitted before that even in the last few years of Upton Park, the atmosphere wasn't always that intense. Exactly. Yeah, it was dead. You know what I mean, ago, so it? It, it's. I think. Jones is right on the basis that people haven't been there for so long. You're going to be seeing people you haven't seen for ages, and I think it all just come together. A lot of um, people just releasing that. Yeah, just, I mean, if we'd been a couple of in the first 10 minutes, it'd probably have been riots or something like that. But, <laughs> you know what I mean? It, it was just one image that worked well in all senses. So, 
yeah you know, totally. perfect Totally agree, mate. Totally agree. It was a it was a brilliant game. Is there anything else that Jonesy? I think I've missed. We've covered Mikel Antonio. Uh, the, there was a couple of funny. I feel like he probably could have scored about four or five, but he'd done well. Um, yeah, I thought the defence played really well. Not that I had anything to do at all, really. My heart was in my mouth when Fabianski went down at the end. But um, yeah, I think all in all, just just good to be back. Is there anything I've missed though, James? Um, I don't think so. You, I just... you, you've... Just, all, just a lovely, around. lovely occasion. And did you cry when you were tweeting earlier today? Yes or no? Did I cry? No, I didn't. Cry when you were no. tweeting? No, not they were very tweeting. emotional tweets. I mean, weren't they? Yeah, I remember. I, I remember sitting on the train while I was tweeting, and just sort of looking about, and all the other West Ham fans about, and I thought, just don't cry now because you look like a right idiot <laughs> on the on the train. But um, I was very close to it. But yeah, it was just it was just a great night all round. Just everything about it, the relief, like the. The relief of being back, the seeing people that we hadn't seen for a while, and then putting a performance and a result in that we just didn't see coming. So, um, yeah, perfect night. We've just got to follow it up now on Saturday, and that's the one I'm looking forward to. First three o'clock game. Um, get the old uh, get the old match day ritual back in action. That's the one I'm really looking forward to. Absolutely, mate. Well, uh, that's brilliant stuff. 